Hi everybody, my name is Debbie Ray and I'm the owner of PedigreePups.com and today I'd like to take a couple of minutes to share some information with you about just one of the many dog breed groups that the AKC has and I'd like to talk to you today about the herding dog group. Now what exactly is the herding dog group? Well, the herding dog group was created in 1983. It's the newest of the AKC dog groups. Now, the members of the herding group today were formerly members of the working group. This group contains some of the most ancient dog breeds and is also quite diverse. The super intelligent herding dog breeds were bred primarily to help man drive livestock and to help keep them all under control, with or without human supervision. Overall, these intelligent herding dog breeds make excellent pets and they respond quite beautifully to many different kinds of training such as agility, search and rescue, or even obedience. So let's talk about some of the different members of the herding group, breed group. Uh, and these are as of uh, March 25th, 2008. Now the first dog we're going to talk about in the herding group is the Australian Cattle Dog. Now, the Australian cattle dog originally was bred to work cattle in the rough inland terrain of Australia. These dogs are basically a wash and wear dog. The only grooming required basically is a bath and a good brushing occasionally to keep their coat clean and healthy. Now, their grooming needs are low, but their exercise needs are very, very high. These dogs are not a good choice for an apartment dweller or for anyone who's a couch potato. The ACD, ACD is sometimes called the Red Healer, the Blue Healer, the Queensland Healer, Queensland Blue Healer, and they're originally known as the Australian Healer. Now next we're going to talk about the Australian Shepherd. Now the Australian Shepherd has lots of energy and they have a very very high drive. They also do best when they have a lot of things to do or they have a job to do and they excel at many different kinds of dog sports such as frisbee or dog agility. One distinguishing characteristic of the Australian Shepherd is his tail, which is usually kept in a uh, natural bobtail or sometimes it may be docked. Another distinguishing characteristic is their beautiful and amazing choice of coat colors within the breed. The Aussie is very, very intelligent. They can learn anything very quickly and they love to play, play, play. So keep in mind, a bored, neglected, or under exercised Aussie will invent its own games and activities to keep it busy and many of these things you probably won't be very happy with. Um, they're often referred to as Velcro dogs because they have a very strong desire to also always be very close to their owners. Now the next dog in the herding group is called the Bearded Collie. Now the Beardy is one of Scotland's oldest dog breeds. It's a medium sized dog with a medium sized coat that follows the natural lines of the body. Now the Beardy prefers to be outdoors. They are not recommended for apartment life. Beardies need regular grooming to keep their coats free of tangles and at least one to two hours of exercise each week to keep them fit. Beardies can sleep outdoors and they make excellent working farm dogs. They are bred to work long hours and to think for themselves how to best get the job done. And the next is a dog breed that you may not be familiar with. It's called the Bolseron. And to me, these dogs resemble a cross between a Doberman Pinscher and a German Shepherd. Be forewarned, they are territorial and early socialization is a definite must. These are an old herding dog breed, even though they're almost unknown outside of their native France. Short-coated, they come in two color patterns, the common black and tan that you see on the screen, and also the more rare Harlequin, a pattern similar to the Dapple and Dotsons or the Merle and Great Danes. They need lots of attention and exercise to be happy. They also need a specific job to do and lots of space to use up its energy. Agility is a great sporting outlet to participate in with this vigorous dog breed. The best home for these dogs, indoors with a large fenced area for them to play with when they're outside. The next dog breed we'll talk about is the Belgian Malinois. Now the Belgian Malinois is just one of four types of Belgian shepherding dogs registered in Belgium and France. The other varia variations on, on the, these Belgian shepherd dogs are the Tervuren, the Grenondel, and also the Lacanois. Now the Belgian Malinois possess a very strong desire to work and they're quick and very responsive to commands from their owner. They are a very smart and obedient dog. This breed is super confident. He is naturally protective of his owner's person and their property without being overly aggressive. They need extensive socialization from an early age. The best advice for you, socialize, socialize, socialize. Malinois make excellent police and guard dogs and they're often used in these canine jobs. 
This is an excellent working dog for an experienced dog owner. And the next is a Belgian Sheepdog. Now the Belgian Sheepdog is also known as the Gr Gronendal. And I probably mispronounced that really bad, so I'm sorry. You have to uh, just bear with me on that. Um, these dogs are renowned for their beautiful long-haired black coat. This dog needs extensive socialization as well from a very early age. So socialize, socialize, socialize. The Belgian Sheepdog is a very seasonal heavy shedder, expecting to shed at least twice a year very heavily with some additional shedding throughout the year. Regular grooming will help keep their coat in top shape. They're not the best dog for apartment dwellers. They need a lot of exercise and a safe place to play within a fence confinement. Belgian Shepherds need mental stimulation as much, if not more so, than they do physical activity. Also, they lean very uh, highly toward being a one-person dog. And the next dog we'll talk about is the Belgian Tavurin. Now the Tavurin also is one of these four Belgian sheep herding dogs that we're talking about. He usually chooses one person to whom he becomes most attached. These dogs again need extensive socialization from an early age. So again, socialize, 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 early right from birth. He is an active dog and they need daily exercise and lots of it. The working Tavurin lines tend to have a particularly high drive. So just so you'll know, they need have a lot of energy and they need a job for them to use it in. The Border Collie is, is, some, is a dog that I'm sure a lot of people are very familiar with. They're a very highly intelligent dog. They make that the most intelligent dog of all. Um, these dogs are energetic, they're eager, they're highly intense, responsive, and they're very receptive to any kind of training. The BC exemplifies the canine worth ethic. These sheep herding wizards were abundant throughout Great Britain during the early 1800s. The border's ability and eagerness to learn and to work are legendary. This dog is a dog that loves to work, and if you do not find a job for him, he'll find one for himself, and chances are high that you won't like the one he has found. He's extremely work-oriented and is genetically programmed to work. These dogs make really bad pet choices for people who can't provide considerable amount of daily exercise as well as mental stimulation. And the Bouvier de Flandre is a, a dog um, redeemed for his uh, abilities as being an, a multi-purpose farm dog. His origin is that of a cattle herder and a general farmer's helper, including that of cart pulling. Today they serve mainly as professional guard dogs or as family pets. These dogs have served in many jobs such as a cattle driver, messenger, guardian, ambulance dog, as well as protector. The Bouvier is a versatile dog and is usually around 23 to 27 inches tall, so they're a pretty big dog. The Bouvier is a natural guard dog, but he is not an attack dog. He is a very tolerant dog who enjoys the company of children, but may chase smaller animals perceived as prey, including cats. And the Briard is a very old French working dog breed. These dogs were originally bred to herd stock as well as to guard the sheep. As such, they were often left to their own devices in order to accomplish whatever individual tasks and decisions that needed to be made, and they made them on their own. This makes them a very, a very different from most dog breeds in that uh, not only could they guard the livestock, but they could herd it as well. This breed can do either, or both tasks equally well. It's very important that they be introduced to many different individuals of all ages, shapes, sizes, and in all kinds of situations from a very early age. Socialization starting at a very early, at a very early age is mandatory for this breed. Now the Canaan dog is both a herding and a flock guardian dog breed, and these dogs are native to the Middle East. Its origins are pariah stock and was originally developed from a redomesticated pariah stock captured in Palestine. The intelligent Canaan dog tends to be a one-person dog or a one-family dog. This is also a very responsive companion dog breed and they are very natural guardians. They are very vocal, persistent, and can be trained quite easily. They are also a natural guard dog and an excellent watchdog. This is a working dog that will not be happy just sitting around by any means. They are very intelligent dogs and they need a lot of exercise and a lot of mental and physical challenges, so keep that in mind if you're thinking about adding one of these dogs to your family. And the next dog is probably one you've seen quite often. These are collies. And on the screen you'll see a picture of a rough collie and a smooth collie. 
collies are an alert watchdog they're very quick to sound alarm and they're very protective of their family although they're not an aggressive dog well renowned for its loyalty intelligence and reliability they make a great companion animal and they make a great friend and they're best suited to living indoors with our human flock and if you'll see on the screen just just keep keep this in mind the smooth and the rough collie are defined by the same breed standard and the only difference between the two is the uh, coat quality and distribution roughs have a double coat with a hardy a heavier, longer, weather-resistant outer coat, and a softer, fluffy undercoat, like the you probably think of Lassie when you think of a, a rough collie. The smooths have a, the same double coat, however, the outer coat is much shorter and less dense than the the rough's coat. Now, the German Shepherd dog is a very versatile breed, and its well-earned reputation as a family companion, a guide dog, police call, police dog, and of course, as a herding dog. They excel at tracking, guarding, guide dog work, as a you know border patrol dog, obedience, you name it. The German Shepherd can do it. They are known throughout the world for their uncanny intelligence and faithfulness. These are focused, fearless dogs that love activity of all types. They are an excellent house dog, but if you live in an apartment or a small house, you'll need to give your dog daily exercise. They do shed all year round, especially if you keep an indoor dog. So if you have an aversion to dog hair, be forewarned, they do shed. Regular brushing can keep this problem under control, however. Now the Old English Sheepdog um, is one that has a, a very heavy coat and this is probably one of its most distinctive features. These dogs were bred to work in foul weather and their double coat was was basically just there to help keep them warm and dry in this terrible nasty weather that they worked in while helping to also protect them from brambles and brush they may have gone through. Their coat is profuse but not excessive and it can take up to three or four hours a week to groom. The old English sheepdog breed is known to shed as well, so if you have an aversion to dog hair, you may want to seriously consider another breed. The old English sheepdog loves his home and family, and they're an ex exceptionally affectionate dog and, and as well as an intelligent dog, and they make a very good house dog. They also do well with children and are said to be sweet, sensitive, bright, and funny. They can make excellent friends and excellent pets if you can put up with all that hair. Now the Polish Lowland Sheepdog is one of the newer breeds that have been added to the AKC herding uh, dog group. The Polish Sheepdog is stable and they're very self-confident and they need a dominant master and consistent training from, time, from the time that he's very young. If this is not provided, he'll tend to dominate your, the master. When not used as a herding or a working dog, he can be a magnificent companion and he seems to fit well into almost any type of lifestyle. He is very loyal, but somewhat aloof and very suspicious of strangers. Overall, these dogs are considered non-shedders, but you must be prepared to brush the coat thoroughly a few times a week to keep him clean. No trimming of the coat is needed. Now here's the Puley or the Puli, as some people say. Uh, the Puli has been part of the lives of Hungarian shepherds for more than a thousand years. Its long corded coat is a definite characteristic of the breed. The unique corded coat begins to form around the age of about six months. Many shepherds seem to prefer these dogs simply because they are easier to see among the rest of the flock. Now, some dogs are white, some are black, but they also come in, in color uh, of apricot. It must be stressed that this dog and, and dealing with the coat is a very big job which can, you know, you, the, devoter, the owner has to just be devoted to this. A heavily coated dog can take up to an hour to bathe and maybe up to, you know, three days to completely air dry or six hours plus to, to dry with the use of a blow dryer. Now the Shetland Sheepdog, also called the Sheltie, originated in the Shetland Islands, about a hundred so uh, miles above Scotland, which is a very rough place to call home. Now these are a very small herding working or herding dog. They were simply perfect to handle the islands smaller than average Shetland sheep. Overall, they can work for years beyond most other breeds, and their desire to work doesn't diminish when a Sheltie passes its prime. One of the wonderful attributes of the Sheltie is its beautiful, long, harsh coat. They might look like a rough collie, uh, but they're not a miniature rough collie by any means. One other thing, lots of grooming is required to keep that beautiful coat in proper shape.
Due to their compact size and activity levels, this breed dominates dog agility competitions and they excel at herding, competitive obedience, fly ball, and also tracking. Participating in any of these sports will easily satisfy a Sheltie's needs for mental and physical stimulation. Now the Swedish Falhund is the newest member of the herding group. Now these dogs are a very old Scandinavian herding dog breed and uh, these dogs were said to possibly be ancestors of the Pembroke Welsh Corgi. As a herding dog, the Valhund was used primarily as a cattle dog, but they also worked other kinds of stock such as sheep, etc. Valhunds are natural healers and are able to quickly duck out of the way from a kick from such animals as cattle or whatever. Uh, the Valhund word means shepherd dog. They are very self-confident dogs, and they're also very lively and very inquisitive. They're good family dogs. They're friendly, healthy, and very hardy. And last but not least, we'll talk about the Welsh Corgi. The name Corgi comes from a Welsh word that means dwarf dog. Now, the Pembroke Welsh Corgi is the smallest dog in the herding group, and if you look on the screen, the uh, cream and white colored dog to the right is a Pembroke Corgi. The Pembroke is the smallest dog in the herding group. They're very low set. They have a little nub of a tail. These dogs are very strong and sturdily built, and they're very active. And they, they give an impression of substance and stamina in a very, very small space. And they're kind of foxy looking, too. The Pembroke is the smaller and lighter of the two corgi breeds and has a darker short tail. Now, if you look on the left-hand side of the screen, the black and white dog, and that is a Cardigan Welsh Corgi. Now the Cardigan Welsh Corgi has a low set and moderately heavier bone. They have bigger ears, uh, a deeper chest, and a long set tail, a long low set tail. So the uh, Cardigan has a tail, the Pembroke does not. Cardigans have a special affinity for children and will adapt easily to playing uh, with a child or a senior citizen or even the handicapped. But both of these dogs are very good uh, pets and they're, they're very loving and, and playful and they, they do like to be around people. If you'd like to learn more about uh, other AKC purebred dogs or if you'd like to learn even about other AKC herding groups or the working group or the toy group or whatever, please visit my website at pedigreepups.com. That's www.pedigreepups.com. And I hope you've enjoyed this material. Have a good day.